Hey guys, welcome to Homesteading Through Our Eyes. Today we are going to work on our wood stove pipe and our wood stove chimney. So what we did first is found where we wanted our chimney to be, which was out of the prevailing winds and away from any people that would want to look at it. So we picked our location and the first thing it says to do is cut away an X in the lattice wall. So they say to use a handsaw to do that, I just used a jigsaw with a small blade and it worked fine. I had someone push this out and I just came through and cut it, cut it and got it as close as I could here. The next step was to find exactly where our pipe was going to penetrate through the fabric. So <coughs> We put this flashing up, and I slid it so that the pipe was two inches away from the snow and wind kit rafter, as well as two inches away from any lattice. Next step was to draw the circle. So I had an assistant go outside and push against the outside of the yurt in. I had this up again. They pushed it flush. I went around with a pencil, made the mark. And it says the next step is to take a pencil and make another circle that's two inches more bigger more bigger Why than didn't? the original circle and cut out the larger circle the idea behind this is that the pipe will actually be going through this and you can imagine a two inch larger circle with the fabric cut away that's so the pipe won't have anything won't heat the fabric. So let me get to making the larger circle and we'll be back with you shortly to show you that. The next step is to cut the insulation and side cover. sturdy. All right, so we have the canvas and the insulation cut out. Now it's time to put the flashing on. So in order to make the pilot holes, I got our inside flashing where I wanted it to be and I traced out a line exactly where the flashing would go and then inside the line I marked my holes for the pilot holes where the screws will be drilled and then you simply come through and drill your pilot holes. This is just so that the lathe or lattice won't crack. So.
So once I got the pilot holes in, I took a small skinny drill bit, the same drill bit I used to make the pilot holes. And I got this back in place, lined up with the markings, and then I came in behind and put the drill bit through the hole backwards, pinning this flush, and then just scraped the drill bit onto the back of this flashing. And it will take away this paint color just enough to give you a mark. And then I went through with the screws that were supplied to screw the flashing into the lathe and simply went in and drilled them in. I put this down on a flat piece of wood that I didn't care about drilling into and drilled into the flashing through it and then reversed the screw, came back, flipped it over and then put it in the, the correct way. Um, all the barbs are also on the back side since I drilled through the opposite direction and we're done with the inside flashing. So on to the outside flashing. We'll get that done and we'll uh, be back with you in a minute. So I got the outer flashing cut out an inch wider to fit the pipe as well as screwed in. And uh, I had to cut the inner flashing a little bit more because this pipe had a ridge see the ridge I guess you can't see the ridge it's on the inside but uh, it had a little ridge on it that was getting caught and we couldn't get it through the flashing so I had to go through with some tin snips and cut that out a little bit more so I'll take you inside to show you that so as you can see I had to cut this out a little bit more there was a ridge around the outside of the pipe that catches so it doesn't allow for it to slip out of the yurt or the flashing on the other side. So I cut that ring out a little bit more. We fit the pipe through. As you saw before, we have the T on the outside and now it's on to the next step of concreting. So we dug the hole for the footer. It's four feet deep and where it's supposed to be. We mixed up our first bag of concrete and got it in there for a bottom layer to place the four by six beams on top of. And we're gonna go from there. So we got our four by six posts in and where I want them to be. The instructions to set up the chimney said that the top posts up near the chimney need to be 8 inches apart. So this will give us plenty with 4 inches, 4 inches, I'm going to spread them. So in order to keep these sturdy and level as you're working on them and as you're filling in with the concrete, you want to go through and set up batter boards <coughs> and screw the 4x6 posts into the batter boards. So I'm going to do that now, and we'll get back with you in a minute.
four by sixes are in, the cement is solid and cured, and it's now on to the next step. Uh, we got two 12 foot two by fours, and my plan is to drill holes six inches and a foot, six inches and a foot, and then connect these to the four by six posts to anchor these in and these will hold our chimney. So I'm using a half inch anchor bolt, heavy duty, and it'll definitely hold these in. Need a half inch washer and a half inch nut, as well as a half inch drill bit. So you're simply coming along and drilling. Now as you can see, you want this fairly snug because the more snug it'll be, the tighter hold it'll have. So in order to get those in there, I have to give it a little pressure. And you want that. You don't want it enough to where you can just slip it right through. So I'll get these other holes drilled, and we'll show you the next step. So the next step was to mark your holes on your 4x6 pole to make sure it lined up correctly. So what we did is I held this pole up into place. I gave it three inches at the top, made the hole, gave it another six inches, made the hole, or made the mark, excuse me. <clears throat> and then we, oh, before we made the mark, I made sure that it was level by putting it up there like this and sticking the level there and then as soon as we got it to level we made the marks and the next step is to go ahead and drill the holes for the four by through the four by six post so we'll go ahead and do that and get back with you in a minute After you get your holes drilled in your 4x6, it's time to anchor your 2x4 in with the carriage bolts that I showed earlier. Like I said, you don't want this to go in snug or uh, simple. Simple. You want it to go in snug. So because we're so close here, we're just going to go ahead and put the washer and screw on. This will be better off done with a hammer, but we didn't have one close, so we're going with this. Thank you. 
put your washer and screw on the other side and then you come through with some wrenches and you tighten it in and you can already see that it's pretty snug and this one isn't even all the way hammered in and that will be holding your chimney so stay tuned and we'll get back to you and show you some more Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I just wanted to show you guys what we did. We had like three days of very windy, very cold, sleety, snowy days, so we didn't want to videotape. It would have just been a huge hassle. So I'll tell you what we did from here. Last we left you, we are getting these bolts in for the 2x4s, and we connected our T to our pipe inside and we also put our platform on to support the T. So we did this by taking a little tiny cap off of the T and then placing, I don't know if you can see that from there, this little cap here. Take that off of the T, put the platform on, put the cap back on and there's two little self-tapping screws that you screw back into it and it'll hold it in place. After we had that on, we well, I also added these 2x4s first and then used lag bolts and slightly connected the 2x4s to the platform. And then when everything was connected, we simply drilled pilot holes into the 2x4 just in case the lag bolts decide to split it and then drill, screwed our lag bolts through the 2x4s into these 2x4s. I also added this little support bar right here just to give this a little more of a sturdy frame. This also holds it as a frame and it'll have more up above to hold it steady as well. So all the lag bolts were measured to fit into the 2x4s and we're on to the next step of adding more chimney and adding the brackets and hopefully we'll be done by today. So I'll get to work on that and we'll show you guys what's going to happen and what it's going to look like when it's all done. Scaffolding is coming in handy again. We needed it for the yurt building and now we need it to build this chimney. We got the first piece of 36 inch piping on on to the second and after this we have one more with the chimney cap. You snap it into place and then twist it till it locks. So as I said, the next step was to take our wall straps and connect them to our foundation. They're called wall straps because usually you'd be connecting this to the wall of your house. But if you uh, don't have a wall and you have a foundation as we do, you connect it to a piece of wood and then to the foundation. So before putting the last piece of chimney on because you want to slip these through they don't they open and you know you could bend them around but I found the slipping them over the top is easier so before putting the last piece on I'll slip this one on and install it and then I will install the top piece with the chimney cap well I guess I'll uh, install this on first 
and then put that on top and install this and uh, we should be good to go. So stay tuned and I'll let you see how that goes. So I'm up at the top here and just wanted to show you guys the view as well as the next step. I plan to put a heavy type netting at the top of the dome or near the top of the dome so that we can stand on it kind of like a bird's nest and look out the top all right back to the project so here are the wall straps with the board connected to the frame as well as another joist just to give stability to the outer 2x4s so what I did first is I took a bungee cord because these were pushed out further because of the piece underneath the gloves down there. We're pushing these boards out pretty significantly. So I bungee cord them and pulled them in close enough to slip this board in. It also allowed me to have an extra helper up here, kind of like an extra set of hands to hold it in place. I then went ahead and sunk two screws into each side to make this sturdy as well as to allow this board to be screwed into more than just the 2x4s. It's now screwed into this as well. Took a screw from the outside and angled it into this board as well as screwed this board in through that way. So the wall strap on the back is connected with a simple bolt and nut. Sorry if the uh, video is a little weird and fast or angles are a little weird. As I said, I'm up on top of scaffolding, probably uh, 20 feet high. So on to the next step. So before I installed the pipe first and slipped this on afterwards, for this one I'm going to install this first and then slip it up to the other pipe because the other pipe has the chimney cap already installed on it. So, uh, slip this down. Gonna need two hands for this, so I'll have to put the camera down for a sec. So, I set the camera down for a second, I used two hands, and I got that wall strap down below where I need to screw the next piece on. And now it's time to bring up the next piece. Got our piece up here, and it's now time to install that onto our other piece. So there's these little rivets here that bump out, and then on our other piece, there's boxes that bump out. So the rivets go into those boxes and then slide over and lock into here, can't push any further. So I'll go ahead and get that on and show you what's next. Hey guys, we got the last strap on and secured. 
Strapped in. Screwed in. Cap on. Everything sturdy. And we're good to go. So I hope you uh, can get some experience through my experience with putting in the chimney. Don't be afraid to do it yourself. Definitely possible and plausible. Save some money, a lot of money. Um, we have many other projects like this that we recorded to try to help people and get people interested in doing self uh, work and you know, living self sustainably and such. So make sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching. Take care. Peace.